A sort of interesting fact is that uh, while today programming is viewed as an extremely male-dominated field, uh, it was totally the opposite at the dawn of computing. All programmers of a, uh, from the very beginning were women, and it was because this job was seen as being beneath men. Uh, and uh, so somehow in the interceding 30, 40, 50 years, uh, that's com that gender dynamic has completely shifted around. But what we're seeing uh, now is that sometimes it's the implicit biases that we have which are holding back women and minorities from entering uh, the workforce and, uh, either as data scientists or, uh, or as computer uh, engineers and software engineers. And we've seen a lot of research in this area that's shown that uh, there can be some implicit biases that, uh, in how we judge people once we know about uh, their uh, from their name, their, sort of their uh, gender or their race. And w what we do, right, when we assess uh, the people who uh, are going to be working for us, uh, is we are completely blind to these things. We actually strip away the name and we consider people's um, applications. We just look at how they perform on a series of challenges that we give them that really try to test their ability to uh, be a data scientist and test their understanding of these kind of core fundamental uh, mathematical and programming concepts. And uh, when we do that, I think it actually becomes a much more fair process. Um, and it actually can help increase the number of women and underrepresented minorities uh, in, uh, who sort of make it through the screening process. Just to give you one sort of quick anecdote about this, uh, there's a famous story uh, about music auditions in the 1970s where orchestras had a very, very tiny percentage of their uh, members, or their, uh, uh, their players, their, the people who were playing in the orchestra, uh, as women. And what happened uh, is, at some point, they decided to try to break free from this. And they would put down a curtain between the performer, that is, uh, the, uh, is the auditioner, and the judge, ju judging panel that was trying to determine whether these people should be allowed uh, to play for, in the orchestra. And when they did, the results were night and day. There's a famous uh, study um, that's up on uh, the National Bureau of Economic Research's website, uh, published by two famous uh, researchers from Harvard, talking about this. It's called uh, Orchestrating Diversity. And it talks about how the results were night and day different. Uh, that women, the fraction of women who made it past the screening round, shot up something like sevenfold uh, uh, between uh, not having the curtain down and having the curtain down. And it just goes to sort of show that at this time, there was an implicit bias that women weren't really the kind of caliber of musician that you needed to be able to um, perform at a Carnegie Hall, uh, right? Uh, at these kind of top, uh, this kind of top level symphonic performance. And when you put down a curtain and you just listened to them, as opposed to being able to see whether they were a man or a woman, uh, you then without that kind of knowledge, you suddenly were forced to make judgments just based on the music, just based on their ability, and you saw that, they, uh, the, that you were much more willing to let in women than before. Mm -hmm.